All right, guys, today we're going to be doing a radiator replacement on a 2015 Chevrolet Sonic with the RPO LUV engine, which is the 1.4 liter turbocharged one. Let me show you the problem that we've got here, right? So the owner noticed that the reservoir tank is going down slowly. It's very slow leak each week, but they're having to top it off every week. And if I shine a light right in here where, the, where you can see the back of the radiator so here's your fan assembly and your radiator is right behind it we zoom in there hopefully you guys can see it's all wet where it was driven over here today for me to work on and you can also see the orange colored kind of dried up crusting of the previous leakage right so this definitely needs a new radiator and it's quite the job but it's definitely something you can DIY in your driveway so let's get started all right, we're going to use the GM service manual for the Chevy Sonic for 2015, but this will cover all the years that I put in the video description and title. We're going to jump right into the engine cooling section, and we're going to go down to radiator replacement for the LUV engine. Right, so they're going to go through some steps, and I'm just going to highlight some of that. Most of this we're just going to show you, right? Air cleaner duct assembly off, front compartment front insulator cover off, engine coolant fan shroud we're not going to remove this we're going to try and cut a few steps and just loosen it out and get it out disconnected we'll see how that goes um, got to pull both of the cooler lines for the automatic transmission in and out and then we're going to have to drain the coolant out of the radiator we're going to remove the inlet hose from the radiator we're going to remove the outlet hose from the radiator we're going to pull the front bumper fascia assembly off the vehicle we're going to remove the radiator upper baffle then there's some brackets and clips. We're going to pull the air conditioning compress, uh, condenser forward after we get that done, and then we'll be able to remove the radiator assembly from the vehicle. And then we'll come back down when we get started to do insulation. There will be a few parts. They remind you that you have to cannibalize off the old radiator because the replacement one won't come with them. So we'll go over that as well. So let's just take a closer look at some of these steps, right? So let's just take a look at... For example, this front compartment front insulator on section 3159, that's in a different manual, different volume rather. And all that is is this bottom cover of the engine area so that we can get some access. So we're going to need to jack the vehicle up off the ground in the front, but we won't be able to use ramps because we're going to have to be able to position the wheels. So it's definitely going to be a jack and jack stand situation. And then if we go back over here, and take a look at 9789. This is the hardest part is the fan shroud. So we'll go back and take a look at 789. So here's a view of this hose that we have to remove. There's the reservoir tank that we're going to need to get out of the way. There's another bottom cover here that we're going to need to remove. I'm just going to show all this. Then on the right hand side, we're going to want to remove this wheel well cover to give us some access to come in. Now these are the two parts we're going to try and skip. They want you to pull this air inlet hose so that you have the access to remove the air conditioning refrigerant lines, which means you're going to have to evacuate the refrigerant. We're going to try and skip these two steps because it's, it's a lot very time consuming and it's going to make it really hard to DIY if I go do this. I've got the equipment to pull this and recharge it, but most people won't have it. I think we can skip this. And what this means is we won't be able to remove the fan shroud, but we should be able to get it out of the way so it can remove the radiator. And that's what we're really after here. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and then here we're going to remove the upper and the lower transmission cooling lines. So with those disconnected from the radiator, you normally could remove this fan after you remove these three bolts. There's one on the driver's side, and there's an upper and lower on the passenger side. And then you could take this out, but we're not going to try to take this out. We're just going to try to separate the two. So let's get started. All right, guys, we'll start with this uh, air hose. It's going to be an 8 millimeter on both clamps, top and bottom. Okay, 
And then what we'll do is we'll stick a rag in here to keep any debris from falling into the turbocharger. All right, let's uh, tackle the coolant reservoir next. We're going to get a 10 millimeter and we're going to remove this. All right, so this guy just uh, comes out. There's like a little clip right here that he holds on to. Right now we're just going to sit him here. Eventually what we'll do is we'll bungee him out of the way so he stays out of the way. This hose runs into a little clip on the fan. So since we're going to be trying to loosen up the fan, we'll go ahead and pull that out as well. All right, next up is this front fascia cover. It's held on by two 13 millimeter bolts, one here and one here. There's a single push pin in the center, and then there are two T15 screws, one here and one here. So we're going to remove that eclectic mix of fasteners, and we'll be able to pull this off. Right, and then this center pin's the last one we've got. The way these guys work, you know, you just get to get something like this tool I've got here to separate the middle piece. This one might be uh, damaged. Can't tell yet. He sure stuck. That's for sure. There he goes, all right. And then we should be able to pull him out. And we should be able to remove this whole cover, unless we made a mistake and forgot one of these fasteners. I don't think we did. Ah, I missed one, guys. There we go. One more T15 right here on the outside. I was trying to speed this up and not show all these screws, but now we've got this cover off. He just happens to have a one here. All right, let's move on to the next step. All right, with that cover off, we now have some better access to the leak. You can see the coolant pooling here. This particular radiator leak doesn't have any drips on the garage floor or the driveway of the owner, so it probably just puddles here for a bit before it evaporates. All right, the next thing they want us to go after is this front wheelhouse liner. There's two T15s here and here. Now, normally you'd have a larger cover covering the engine, with an attachment here. This vehicle is missing that. I'll show you the service manual page for that piece, but normally you'd have to remove this as part of this piece that we're after. So we're going to go pull these 215s and then we'll pull up on the other side and show you the push pins that are holding it in the wheel well. All right, and then we got a push pin here right behind the brake line, and then we've got another one here that's holding this liner to the liner we're after. So just like on the others, we're going to want to This one might even just not even be attached. They're all pretty, uh, pretty damaged, but let's see. Yeah, so that one, yeah, he's all right, I guess. He just wasn't in all the way. And then we'll grab this one over here. Hopefully you guys can see okay. There we go. section that goes in popped out but he's okay he's not damaged all right so with those out of the way I think that's all that was holding this guy if there's more it's going to be a surprise there's nothing holding him on the back one more on the front here that we missed. Let's go back underneath and double check. 
All right, guys, the service manual is not clear on the picture for this, but it's pretty obvious that in order to get this piece off that we need to get access to, it's kind of entrapped by the overall wheel liner. Now we're going to have to remove, or rather loosen this anyway, in order to pull the front fascia off. So we're just going to do that a little earlier. If you see starting down here on the perimeter, there's some additional torque screws that run all along the top here. And then there's also two more push pins. So we're going to go ahead and pull these two push pins and pull these Torx fasteners off. That's going to release this inner wheel liner. Like I said, we had to do that anyway to get the front fascia off later in the process. But for now, that'll loosen things up enough to pull this shield off. All right, guys, going back to the service manual, it's not in the picture, but it is in the text. And I'll show you in a minute. This does have to come off. So we've got these three T15s pulled, and I'm just showing you there's one that comes up. It's kind of hard to, to see here. right there. All right, and then back on the bottom, T15 here, and a T15 here. And that should complete what we need to get this piece off so that we can get this piece off. All right, so when you get the screws off here, you'll find these liners are kind of wedged up underneath the fender. You have to pull them out. And then there's a forward piece and a rear piece. And actually, you know, if we kind of pan over to the side here, they kind of slide into each other. Right? And there's going to be all kinds of debris and leaves and stuff you want to get out of here. So we're going to have to separate those in order to get the front piece off. But as you can see, once we got it loose down here, the piece we were after, kind of pan over to the front, right, that fell off. And so when you pull this guy out, what you'll find is he'll be held on by one of the hoses. You slide him back and he'll come off the hose. So we're going to go ahead and get another angle so you can see how to separate these two pieces. And then we have to do, do the same thing on the driver's side. Now remember, the only reason we're taking this piece off on the driver's side is so that we're detaching it from the front bumper fascia because we've got to pull this off to actually get access to the radiator. All right, so guys, these are those little tabs I was talking about that slide in here. And you'll find is I can't get a view on the other side because, you know, it's just too much glare and it's too dark right underneath here. But... These these guys slide together, these three tongues, here, here, and here. you got to kind of get your hand up underneath and, and, and work them loose the way you see this one here coming loose, right? Right there. So I just worked that one loose. we got to work all three of them loose in order to separate this. All right, guys. Got these unhooked. So you can see there's little tabs here, here, and here. And those guys fit on this little clip that you can see right on the edge here. There's three of them. What you can do is you can use the pick to lift this up over the ridge so you can get this front piece out. Now you got You don't have to take the one on the left-hand side out. You just have to loosen it up from the bumper, but we're taking the one on the right-hand side out so we have access to what we need to get to. All right, so the reason all this had to come out, guys, is we gotta have access to this lower transmission cooling line right here and then right underneath that, if we zoom in, is the lower bolt that holds the fan shroud to the radiator. So we have good access now to both of those, or at least as good as it's going to get. Now let me show you access to the other items. All right, guys, so here's the part where I said that the text actually says remove the front wheelhouse liner. So they want you to remove the front wheelhouse liner in order to get access to remove the front liner extension, right? So you actually have to take off both pieces like we showed. So with this out of the way, both the uh, front extension and the front liner, we can go back to the chapter we were on over here. And now we get to these pieces, right? So this charging hose was the hose that was right in front of what I just showed you for the lower bolt and the lower transmission cooling line. So this hose here is what's right in front of this cooling line I just showed you down near the bottom. And that bolt I showed you is this guy right here. Right, so that's just to orient you to the diagram. So you have access to this bolt, and you have access to this guy. I'm going to show you where this guy is up on top now. And the two things we're going to try and skip are, I think we can leave this hose in there because we can get access to those two without taking them off. And we're, not, we're really trying to avoid doing the air conditioner piece because almost nobody watching this video who's not running a shop is going to have the equipment to do this, right? So the whole point of being able to help you DIY it is to leave the air conditioning alone. So we see if we can do it that way. So let me show you where this line is. Go. All right, so coming in here, now here's one of the air conditioning lines. This is the coolant line to the reservoir. And then you can see there's that upper transmission 
uh, cooling line. So this one is very easy access. And then right below that, a nice silver bolt is the top bolt that's holding the fan shroud to the radiator. So we've got access to remove what we need to remove on this side. All right, with the reservoir out of the way, there is the third and final bolt that's holding the fan shroud to the radiator. So we've got access to everything we need to separate fasteners. All right, let's go after these transmission cooler lines now. So let's get this one on the top first. All right, so this guy right here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pick and I'm going to remove this retaining cover right here, this little, little round black thing. Let's get this out of the way. It's not a whole lot of room in here, so kind of having a one-handed. All right, and then what we're going to need to do is there's a little clip here. If you guys can see it, there's the top of the clip right there. Now they make tools that you can squeeze in here to kind of pull this out, but we're just going to come in here and try to get this guy lifted up with the pick. Just need to see if I can uh, see where the edge of this guy is. All right, had to clear some of this gunk out of the way. So what we're after is we're after the end of the clip that's right in here. You can see I'm kind of moving him out of the way there. I might, I don't know if I can get this shot with you guys with the camera there. We're going to give it a try. Otherwise, I might have to move you guys out of the way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the top of this clip with the pliers because I don't want it to go flying. I've got all kinds of... Uh, Instructions in the way here, guys, so bear with me. I'm trying to leave the best view for you all. All right. I got that clip largely off, but unfortunately, I have got to move you guys out of the way to pull it out. But that's all you got to do. It's released now. I'm going to come in where you guys are. And I'm just going to pull it off the line and then we'll pull, I'm me off the fitting and then we'll pull the line out. All right, so we've kind of entrapped him right there and fishing him out. That's the little clip. So if you don't damage it, you probably could reuse it, although I recommend you replace it. And I'll show you the part number to replace it when we get to installing the new radiator. All right, to disconnect the line, first we're going to get it off of the fan shroud. There's a little molding down here. It's just going to take a long screwdriver or a pry bar. We're just going to make sure that we're able to get that out of there. Now, we're going to have to disconnect it before it'll actually come out, but that's where we're going to pop it out of. And now I'm going to reach my hand in. Hopefully, hopefully I can fish my hand through all these lines and get over here. If not, I might have to come up through here instead. Again, we're you know we're leaving all these AC lines on, so I'm probably gonna have to put a little bit of a pry bar action on here. There we go. All right. All right, so we got it to release. You guys can see that right there, right? So now we're going to, again, have to fight with these different obstructions, right? So we've got the AC line here that we chose to leave. We're going to try to keep going down this path of that. But now with this guy disconnected, I'm hoping I can just block your view for a second and pull this guy a little bit. And then I can come down that clip I showed you earlier and pop him out. And so now if I go zoom down here, you can see that he's out of that little clip. All right, let's go down and do the one on the bottom now. All right, for this bottom one, I'm not gonna be able to get you in here for the whole thing, but it's the same deal, right? So remember the bottom one's right over here. I'm gonna reach my hand in, and hopefully I'll be able to, yep, pull that little black cover off like I just did. You see it's sitting on the line now. Now I'm gonna get in here with the pick and the pliers, do the same thing we did on the upper one. All right, just laying under the bumper fast, you guys, is the orientation you'll want to be in. Then you can come at just like you see my arm here, right? And I just put the clip back on right where it came off. That's the orientation you would need to be to get it off right there. 
And then I'm just going to get out of the way so I don't get splashed. You can reach up here with your left hand and you can work the hose loose just like that. And now we move on to the next step, which are these bolts holding the fan shroud. All right, top, um, top on the passenger side, we're going to come in with an eight millimeter quarter inch hardware because we got all these air conditioning hoses. That's the only thing that's going to fit. And I'm just going to break the torque with the hand wrench like that. And then we can probably get the electric in here to zip it off the rest of the way. Once we get the torque broke here and get a little bit loosened up. All right, so we're good to go there. All right, so then we'll be able to come in here with the electric and finish it the rest of the way. Or you can just sit here and keep doing these really small turns. Let's go ahead and get the one over here on the driver's side. All right, so that guy, same piece of equipment, come in right there. So see, got clear access with that. Again, quarter inch hardware. You can work that one off. And then the one on the bottom, I'll have to show you from underneath. All right, so now to go after this last bolt, we're going to come in with the eight millimeter again. We're going to have a wobble socket. We have a wobble on the socket rather. And we're going to come underneath this charge air hose. Now again, you know, this is something that you could have taken off. The service manual suggested to remove this hose. But I don't think we need to do that, right? It's just a minor inconvenience. As you can see, right, we've got plenty of room, although I kind of need to put my other hand up here to hold this. But I'm just showing you guys it's doable from this position with this quarter-inch hardware. That's all I'm trying to show you here. you got to kind of get two hands up there to keep this guy on the socket. Let's go ahead and I'll take this off, and then I'll show you the last thing holding this, which is a clip. All right, with all three bolts out on the driver's side, down about... A little bit more than midway there's a little square retainer on the radiator and there's a tab on the fan that fits into it and I'm gonna move it here you see that moving right so we've we, we, we're gonna have to get this slid over enough to get out of that so I can't do that with the camera here in the way but that's the last thing holding the fan shroud to the radiator and that's like we're going to do in this case I'm not going to try to remove this fan shroud I won't be able to without taking all this air conditioning lines out of here and actually the service manual you'll see in the next step would have told us to actually disconnect these transmission lines from the transmission as well and pull all this out of here we don't want to do all that right we just want to get this guy out of the way so I'm figuring that I might be able to get it to move over enough just to get it out of there and if and even if I can't I believe we'll be able to do it as we remove the radiator so one way or another we'll get it out of that little clip all right here's where we're at guys we pulled those three bolts off and then I showed you how this little clip this little tab that fits in this little clip here on the radiator is going to end up coming out so now we're going to go back to the main instructions and like I said we're going to skip actually removing the hoses we uh, the transmission cooler lines we just disconnected them we're going to try to leave them in there attached to the transmission skip this also and drain the engine coolant now after we drain out the coolant we're going to disconnect not remove I'm just going to disconnect from the radiator the inlet hose and the outlet hose let me show you those three now all right guys passenger side we can still see some transmission fluid dripping from where we disconnected those cooling lines here's the bottom of the radiator mount and on this bottom corner of the radiator mount, this is the drain cock, right? So you can see there's a little nipple here, and there's a little plastic 13 millimeter bolt right here. And when you loosen this guy up, the coolant's going to come out of that nipple. I, I got to get into a better position to loosen this, so I can't have the camera here. But that's the deal, right? You're going to come in here. You can even put a piece of hose on this if you want. You can come in here, and you're going to take this little 13 here, and you're going to loosen him, and that's going to start the draining. All right, guys, here's just a shot of how far the uh, petcock has to be unscrewed before you start to get a flow. All right, and you want to come up here to the reservoir and crack the air here, let it go in, so you can pick up the rate of how fast it comes out. All right, let's go after this uh, upper hose now that the draining's done. We're going to come in here with a tool to kind of get us on this clamp that's on here. Hopefully it's big enough. I might have to get a different tool here. Let's see. There we go. All right. Get the 
which we'll let go. All right, so we got that off of there. Or at least we got the clamp off. And what we're going to try and do is we're going to try to... I don't think it's going to just easily come off here. I'll try, though. What I usually try to do is come in with a pick to get underneath here, but we really don't have any clearance whatsoever. So I'm going to try to grab a different tool to grab the hose and see if I can give them a twist. All right, I'm just going to come in here with a pair of channel pliers. Got a couple of rubber tips on them just to try and not damage the hose. And we're just going to see if we can get some twist action going. I'm trying to just to break the adhesion. Once we break the adhesion, we should be able to get this guy off. Okay, this one's off. Now let's go get the one on the other side. All right, we're going to come in from underneath. You guys are going to watch from on top. I'm going to use a different kind of tool that's got kind of a long extension to it to grab this clamp. Well, almost. Super cramped down here, guys, let me tell you that. We've got this off. I think we've got this off. I think we got it on the radiator now at this point. Let's see. I don't know if that's enough to get it off or not. We'll take that same tool that we used on the upper. And we'll see if we can get any twist action going. We're reusing these hoses, so we definitely don't want to damage them. I think the problem is, I see what the problem is, the clamp is still on part way. So let me fix that. We should be able to get this off. All right, just kind of trying to get this guy up. There we go. All right. Now he should be out of the way. Got him up on the hose. I believe we've got him far enough off the connector. Get it off. Definitely getting some coolant leaking out of here. Just can't get any twist on it. Gotta be patient, guys, because if you're gonna reuse the hose, you don't want it damaged. All right, it's definitely twisting now. Probably what I have to do is come up from on top and pull it. I just don't have enough leverage laying here on my back. So let's try that. All right, now from up here, ah, there we go. All right, that's off. All right, now removing the front bumper fascia and then the radiator upper baffle and there's a bunch of clamps and stuff we'll have to take off like we went over before all right to get this bumper cover off there's a whole bunch of fasteners and push pins that are holding this upper area on I'll show you that and then underneath when you look underneath right some of the stuff we already did there was a torque screw that pointed up you should have already taken that when you did both sides of the wheel liner if you didn't now's the time to go do it what I'm going to show you now are these two Phillips screws 
that are holding on to these brackets underneath. And after that, the last thing we've got are these side pieces, right? So here's the procedure, right? Carefully push a small nylon wedge between the fascia and the guide bracket to separate the joint. Spray some soapy water to act as a lubricant. Install a small flat blade tool or a trim tool and depress the tabs one at a time. Gotta have patience here, guys, or you'll break it. Pull the front fascia, fascia forward and outward to release the retaining tabs. Then disconnect the electrical connectors from the uh, from the turn the fog lights if you've got them. There's also going to be a sensor on the dry, uh, passenger side, I believe, air temperature sensor. And then uh, on reassembly, right, ins ensure that those support retainers on the inside of the radiator grill bumper are in the position they're supposed to be in. So there's this little guide here too, and this is what this thing actually snaps onto. And so I'm going to tell you is you can actually save on breaking anything by pulling this guy and making him loose. So I'm actually going to do that first. So we're going to loosen up these fasteners that hold this guide. That guide is what holds the clips that the bumper's tabs snap into. All right, guys, so you want to take these tens off. There's four of those. And then we've got some Phillips that are running all along the, the front area. And I, th I think you can probably leave these, probably leave these. Uh, nope, nope, they all need to come off. So we're going to take these Phillips off. I'm not going to show you filming all of this, right? But just go along the line here, pulling all these off because we want to separate this cover as the service mount ind indicates when we're separate it from the bumper, fascia cover. And then you've got these push pins here, 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 and here. Just like we took them off on the wheel well, let's take those off as well. All right, so with all these fasteners out, you know, you can see this guy kind of starts to come off here, but I think there's probably some clips or tabs that are in here. And what I'm realizing in looking at this is we actually don't need to separate this from the bumper. We're done just having it separated from the car body, right? So we'll take this off with the bumper. Um, you know, I'm sure there's a way to get the two apart, but we don't need to do that. So we don't need to waste any time trying to fiddle with that. All right, on each side, you're going to have a bracket like this with a Phillips screw attaching into the bottom of the bumper fascia. This screw here on both sides has got to come off. Now, when you go do the passenger side, because we had to take the inner liner off, we already removed these two Torx bolts. This is going to be the only thing holding this bracket on, so just watch for that or a fall on your face. All right, so here's the seam between the bumper fascia and the fender. And so inside here, right, here's the bracket I was telling you about. All right, and then there's a couple of 10 millimeter bolts. All right, there's one right here. If I can kind of get this, I'm not going to be able to do this with you, right? But I'll take a ratcheting box end wrench. I can come in here and I can take these two tens off. There's one here. And there's one right back there. And by taking those off, then I'm releasing the mechanism that holds those tabs. So we should be able to get it off without breaking anything. So let's give that a shot. All right, so with those loosened up, Hopefully you guys can see in here now. This is what we're going to end up trying to do is we're going to end up trying to put a tool in here to get these tabs to let go. And while we got some space, I'm going to put some soapy water in here just like the service manual says. What we're going to end up trying to do is we're going to end up trying to go in here with the flashlight. I'm going to have to end up holding it, and I'm going to probably have to have some help here. But you're going to come in here and release these little tab clips so this will come off. And you might want to run even a little bit of painter's tape around here if you don't have something plastic to avoid any damage to the finish. But that's the technique. All right, so this vehicle's got fog lights, so we're going to have to disconnect that wiring harness from each side. All right, these... These fog light clips, kind of give them a pinch at the bottom, and they'll let go. You see, you give them a pinch right here. 
at the bottom. That little piece moves out on both sides. Now for this temperature sensor, it's got a little safety piece on it, so we have to kind of pull that out first without breaking it. Most are tasks on this job or try to avoid breaking plastic. I'm hoping with that, is that enough to let it to go? Nope, it looks like you have to take it all the way off. There. Alright, so that guy comes off and then That'll permit you to where you can push in the connector and remove it. So at this point, everything's disconnected. If you got all the fasteners, you should be able to just remove the bumper. All right, and then with that out of the way, it'll just come off, and we're almost there, right? So now we can get access to these last few pieces in the condenser that are in front of the radiator. Guys, here's just a shot from the parts manual, the GM parts manual, just showing all the different pieces that are involved here. I thought it might be helpful for you to see this little parts explosion. This is the condenser. There's like a plastic piece on top that's a baffle. This is the bracket. It's on the dryer side. Here's the intercooler where the charge air hoses connect. There's this lower uh, baffle piece. There's also some side baffles with push pins. These parts can all be replaced. They're missing. Also don't forget there's some uh, rubber bushings on the bottom pegs of the radiator as well as the ones that we removed from the top. There's the orientation of the bracket, of course the upper baffle, and then there's the fan shroud and electric fan. All right, so let's go get these baffles off like the service manual indicated. So we've got push pins holding the upper baffle. Come on out of there. That's one. There's two. And then you got this guy right here. So we can rotate him around where we got the indent easier to access. A lot of times I would imagine this bracket is probably going to be broken if you've had any kind of front end collisions. All right, and then there should be one more like this on this side, and there is. All right, with all those out, now this one's off, and you got a great view of the condenser now. Now we're going to take the lower one off. Same kind of deal. So there's going to be a push pin right here. Come on. And there's one right here. So there's two on this side. I won't bore you guys with all of this, right? And then there's two just like it on the other side. All right. I thought we were almost done here. This one got kind of stuck on me. All right. So with both of these out now, we should be able to get this piece off. So it might be something up above here. Let's go see. So, nope, this is a baffle. So, nothing holding it up here that I can tell. Ah, it's on the bottom, guys. So, you never kind of want to jerk things around, but if you look inside here, we can see there's some Christmas tree type push pins rather than the uh, ones we've been looking at. I'm thinking that that's what it's getting stuck on. It's not letting us pull it past this metal bracket. All right, so I'm gonna have to analyze how we extract it. It's been it's been loosened now. We just gotta figure out how to extract it. All right, let's start getting the condenser separated from the radiator. So this radiator clip 
right? This is going to be easy. We're just going to push it in, but we're not going to be able to get anywhere until we take some of these bolts off. So we're going to have to get in here and get this bolt off. Looks like an eight millimeter again. Yeah, we're not going to be able to get the electric on this one. So we'll come back to that one. But on the other side, then we've got another one right here. I might have to get an extension to get on this one. Just trying to break the torque on it first. Just uh, really rusty. All right, so there's that. We'll get a ratchet on the other one. And then I think if you come down here, right, so beside your condenser, Here's your charge air cooler, right? This is what cools the air on the turbocharged one. So it's just air traveling through this. But you can see there's another 8 millimeter attaching to the radiator here. The service manual doesn't mention this fastener, but it's pretty, looks like it has to come off in order to separate the two. So we need to be prepared to take that one off as well. All right, so with this bolt off, we can get it off this fastener. We don't have a lot of movement yet. And of course, with this small, off, we got a lot of movement. We can actually lift it up. So if we have to, we can lift it up out of this little tray that it sits on down here that's part of the radiator, right? And we would be able to kind of move it out of the way. So what I think we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and pull that 8 millimeter bolt down here that's holding the charge air cooler. The flashlight here and show you this guy here. Actually, let's just take the wobbly off that. All right, so this guy is a little loose now. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start disassembling the pieces that hold the radiator itself. So we're going to come up on top. We're going to take this 13, yep, this 13, and this 13. These are just the mounting brackets. All right, so we've got movement now. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm thinking ultimately I can see that even if we get this to where we can pull it out, we're probably gonna have to remove this brace that the bumper attaches to. So you know we're having to deviate from the service manual instructions because we deviated from the service manual instructions by not removing the air conditioning lines. All right, so with the ability to move it this far, let's go ahead and get a 10 just take this whole bracket assembly off here and here. Okay, we'll set this aside. Let's see how we're doing, guys. All right, let's go ahead and take care of this fan shroud tab that we were talking about. So if we come in over on this side, remember earlier we kind of talked about needing to move that. You can kind of get a really good view of it right there, right? So we're going to need to get the fan shroud worked out of that tab and that should let us pull this radiator the rest of the way forward. So let's go do that now. All right, so we got that. It's a t you know, it's, it's a two-person job, um, really. You know, somebody's got to pull the radiator forward while the other person manipulates the fan shroud. And now you can see up here, we're at a point where we can pull this guy back just enough to get him out, but this is going to be in the way. 
And again, guys, we have all this hassle because we wanted to avoid disconnecting the air conditioning, right? If we disconnect the air conditioning, this would fall further forward and we'd be able to pull it past this. But I'm going to go ahead and pull these two 13s. And then on the other side here, looks like, um, uh, no, no, this one, we should just be able to work this one out um, by getting a pick. We'll be able to work this clip out. We'll be able to roll this latch out of the way, and that'll give us the last bit of clearance we need to pull the radio. All right, guys, so this particular vehicle is equip equipped with a remote start, so it's got an electrical connection to the latch. So we've got to come over here and disconnect this. Same kind of connector retainer that we saw when we were disconnecting the ambient air temp temperature sensor on the front of the fascia. Let's get this guy off. Come on. For some reason she's stuck on one side. Ah, there we go. Nothing broke. All right, that's always the goal. All right, and now with that off, we should be able to disconnect this. And then we're going to have to kind of see if we can get a pick in here to work this clip off, and then we'll be able to run it up through here. Yeah, guys, all this to change the radiator. All right, so we're going to work this up through here on both of these, and then the same thing over here, and then we'll be able to fish it through and get this out of the way. All right, we've gotten as much out of our way as we can. We're going to take these little rubber grommets off each end of the radiator mount. We're probably going to end up having to reuse those. Okay, so now we can lift up on this side. Lift up on this side. So last thing in our way is we've got to get the condenser in some kind of a home where if we come over here again, right, this, this piece here that it sits on is part of the radiator. So we've got to get the condenser out of the way where we can clear the radiator uh, without having it hit that, right? So we may end up having to solve how to get this baffle out of the way to get it a little bit forward. So let me go kind of noodle on that. And again, all this, guys, just so we don't, you know, pull the air conditioning. If we would pulled the air conditioning off, we'd be done, right? We would have had this hose disconnected. We would have just taken this condenser out of the way, and we'd be done already. But um, you guys aren't going to be able to do that. And so I'm trying to figure out how we can do this without pulling the refrigerant charge. All right, guys, so um, it's obstructed, and I think I figured out why. So we've got a mistake in the service manual that I'm going to show you. And I'm going to show you what it's obstructed on. So we come down here. This particular vehicle has what's called, like I said before, a charge air cooler, right? This is just air moves through this. And there's a cam here that this unit fits into, and this is part of the radiator. So you can't lift up the radiator with this in the way. And to get this guy off, we've got to get this off. And we've already figured out that the only way to get this off is to take off this little piece of bumper here. It's held on by uh, three 13 millimeters on each side. So let's go back to service manual and I'll show you where the mistake is. All right, so you notice in this picture the charge air cooler is still there. And in this picture, it's still there. And in this picture, it's gone. So we don't have a step here, right? Because they, they, they Todd removed these clips, support the AC condenser, Remove the upper brackets, which we did, and then remove the radiator. They missed a step to tell you that you've got to remove this charge air cooler. Now, there's a section that talks about doing this. It's right over here. At least, you know, the hoses, right? So you'd have to disconnect these hoses on each end, presumably, and then you'd be able to pull this thing out of there after you remove that bumper piece. So let me show you taking that bumper piece off and getting this thing out of the way. Guys, it's a whole big production just not to pull the air conditioning lines, and then you find out even if you did pull the air conditioning lines, you'd still be hung up on this guy. All right, guys, let's get this lower baffle out. It's getting chilly out here, so we had a little bit of an interlude to get some warmer clothes on. I'm going to put a um, cardboard piece up here as we take this out so that we don't damage the uh, fins on the condenser. That's all that's here for. All right, so to get this guy out, we're going to slide him to the passenger side. So we're going to get him up over this, up over the intercooler down here where the charge air hoses go. 
And then when he's over in this space here, we should be able to get him to come down. And we can. Good. All right, so that's out. We'll need this again when we want to put it in between the condenser and the radiator when we're taking it out. All right, so the next thing we're going to have to do, you know, so we took this lower bar out and we got this guy out. Now we've got to get the inner core out where the two charge air hoses come in because as we saw, these cams here are part of the bottom of the radiator. So we have to be able to squeeze this clip here. We already took the bolt off the other side. And then if you look at the side, they're shaped like a half moon. So we're going to have to rotate this towards the front, which means we're going to have to release these special clamps. Now I brake cleaned this one and the other one. This one's still kind of gummy. I don't think it's going to film good. So we'll show taking off the other one, but they're both the same. All right, both of the retainers on these charge air hoses are part of the hose. This isn't a separate clamp. This is all part of an integrated assembly. And so what you've got is this wire retainer depresses into a groove here. And then on the other side, there's one down here. We can't really you know, see it without the camera. You're just going to have to go with, go with me on this. There's another one like that. And then in the back, the wire depresses into finally an additional groove that we can see in the very back. So three anchor points with this wire retainer. In order to get it off, it's kind of a little dance here. If we come back to the front. The reason I picked this one is it's not all gummed up. So on both the top and the bottom, you can see there's the wire right there, right? And so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to take a couple of picks. I'll show you the top, and then we're going to have to do the bottom too. And we're going to want to get this guy into this groove up here. All right? And now that has taken him out of this one. I'm going to have to do the same thing on the bottom. And then what you'll see is in the back, you can see this thing's coming out in the back. So when I do the bottom one, all of them will be released. So let me go do the bottom and then we'll pull the hose. All right, with the top spring in this black retainer here, it'll be out of the groove on the top. If you see on the top, it's out of the groove. Same thing on the bottom with this guy there. You can't see it, but it'll be out of the groove on the bottom. And then if we look in the back, you stick a long nose plier in there, you'll take the clamp out of the back area, the spring rather. And now with that, we should be able just to steadily pull on this guy. There he comes off. Right? And so that's the dealio with this particular type of attachment. And then when you put it back on, it should stay like this until we release these two and then it'll snap into position. We're going to do the same thing on the other side and then we'll be able to remove the intercooler. All right, if you get this clamp off, you know, you might see a little bit of oil on the inside of this seal. It's right on the inside here. That's like kind of normal. I mean, it's not supposed to be a whole lot. I can indicate you got issues with the triple charger, but uh, a little bit like we have here is, is okay. We just want to clean that up. All right, so now, so we got both charge air hoses removed. Now to get the intercooler itself off, we got a clip similar to what we had on the condenser attached to the radiator. And with that, we should be able just to rotate this guy f forward out of these cams. Whoops attached it. I'm not sure if it like uh, rotates at a pivot or or what, but it's got to come out at this point because there's nothing holding it anymore. Over here just looking at the other one to see how it's it's looking. All right, the other side's out. This side, I think, is just gummed up with some crud in there. We'll clean all that up before we install this, too. And then just like a condenser or a radiator, we don't want to damage these fins. This looks like, you know, it had some kind of a, a road impact here at the bottom. But other than that, we didn't damage it taking it out. All right, so now with that out of the way, gosh, I can't believe this, guys, what it's taken to get this radiator off. But this is the bottom of the radiator. 
and there's the petcock that we used to drain the radiator reinstalled. So now we can put some cardboard around the condenser. We're going to try to pull it forward enough to get this damn thing out of here finally. All right, so we've put some cardboard around the condenser to protect it. And we also put a little strip between the dryer and the uh, bumper reinforcement just so we don't bang things around. There's going to be a peg like this on the bottom of the radiator on each side. We're going to have to lift the radiator out to get out of that peg on this side, and then we're going to have to do the same thing on the other side. We've got about half an inch of clearance to get the radiator moved away from the little dryer perch here. So we've got plenty of room to work on this side. The problem is on this side. Since we did not disconnect the air conditioning lines, we've got we just we don't have any play at all here, right? This is this is it. We can move up and down, but we cannot move away from the radiator. So we should be able to get this out of the peg from the bottom. Then we're gonna have to have a helper hold this whole air conditioning assembly in place while we try to shift the radiator up and lift it out from the driver's side. So that's the approach we're going to take. All right, so let's first deal with this piece. So I'm going to lift up on the radiator. Okay, I got it out of this bottom peg. So now that's that's step one. We're going to do this, this in pieces for you guys. So I'm going to go on the other side and get the peg out the other side. All right, so now let's lift up on this side. All right, so we got that peg out. All right, so now we're going to shift our position again. We got to get the little dryer perch on the driver's side away so we can pivot this. All right, I can see enough that this little elbow is going to be cutting off some of our clearance. So we're going to stick a flathead in here and we're going to remove this little retaining clip like so. It fits into a notch right there. Yep, you guys can see that. And then I'm going to get in here and uh, wiggle this guy off. I guess I'm going to have to come in from the inside. We'll get that guy off. All right, guys, so we took this off. Just put this pry bar up here and gave it a couple of taps with this uh, rubber mallet and she popped right off. And here's a shot from that same piece that we just removed from the service manual. You can optionally pull this whole clip off, but as long as you get it out into the locking positions, it should be enough to remove it. Nothing much to it. All right, let's keep going. All right, just about to try and do the lift out and I noticed we've got this other little connection over here. It looks like a sensor connection. It's another one of these kind of clips. Take that little pin out, and we should be able to get this sensor out of here. So that should finally be the last thing before we pull this guy. All right, so it just slides right out. It's just a temperature sensor. All right, guys, so now at this point, we've gotten the radiator shifted over enough to clear the little shelf that the condenser dryer sits on. All right, as you walk this guy up, you want to protect the condenser from the retaining clip that held on the intercooler, this stud that was used to attach one of the mounting brackets for the condenser and this mounting clip for the condenser, right? So each time we walk these up, we use a combination of putty knives to keep them from damaging the condenser. And similarly, now we've got the little cam that the intercooler fits in that we're having to do the same thing. The other thing I did to give us a little bit more clearance is firmly grasped the block here for the hoses, the lines, the hard lines, the aluminum hard lines that go in the condenser and grab the other side and just gave them a slight bend just to give us about a quarter of an inch more clearance. You can see we're just about done. Now if we come over on this side and you can see our leak very clearly now. It's pretty extensive and this side comes out pretty easy. It's that side that's the problem. So at this point we, we're just seconds away from removing it. Alright guys just to show you right we're running down the side here. We don't have any casualties on our fins. Get you a flashlight and show you the technique that we used, right? We might maybe, maybe have something right at the bottom. That could have been there from before. Who knows? And then one maybe very small defect right about there, but nothing significant. The biggest casualty was this foam. We had to kind of wedge against this foam coming up, but that's replaceable. So on the other side over here, what we've done... We've got the dryer sitting up on a couple of pieces of wood to support it. Now that we've got the radiator out, there's nothing holding it. All right, so yes, it is possible to replace the radiator without discharging the air conditioning system and removing the air conditioning lines. 
and taking out the transmission cooler lines, but it is a PETA. Let's go take a look at our replacement part. All right, we're going to replace this with a GM 9531-6049 or an AC Delco 21-829. So let's get this guy open up and see if it's the same. All right, let's get the uh, foamy stuff off. And make sure this is the same. All right, so there's our two transmission cooler lines. Here's a brand new temperature sensor installed, so we don't have to do anything with that. There's those two pegs on the bottom we were talking about. So we can take a look here. There's our vent um, screw. We actually could have turned this if we had the access instead of opening up the reservoir when we were doing the draining. All right, so everything looks here. There's a new petcock on the bottom with a new petcock screw. All of our clips that we needed, that's for the intercooler. There's the mount for the condenser. There's the clip for the condenser. You can see over on the other side, there's the shelf for the dryer. There's the mount for the condenser. Everything looks legit. Made in Italy. It's kind of an unusual place, but um, this is kind of common with these Sonics. It's like a Euro car, even though it's designed in South Korea. It's parts from all over the place. All right, this is the right part. Let's go about getting it back installed. We're just going to reverse the process. I'm not going to show all the steps because I'm sure even after the editing, we're looking at probably 45, 50 minutes of video here to get to this point. I'm just going to stop on all the key points and torque values as we finish all right, up. Before I put this in, right, so the new GM radiator has new fittings for the transmission cooler lines. And I wanted to show you that the clip that we took off is pre-installed. So you see there's one, two, three little notches on the clip that grab the hose. It's going to be the, the pipe. So we just have to push the pipe in and we're done. We're going to try leaving these dust covers in. Hopefully there won't be a clearance problem. I can't see them being a clearance problem here, but there might be a clearance problem with the one on top. So we might have to remove that one. Now, if you have a radiator for some reason these clips are missing, like I was saying earlier, I would suggest rather than reusing them, you put new ones in. 2420-5103, one in each fitting new clips. They should be covered with like this kind of blue anti-corrosion material. That's what I would suggest you use. All right, so for the install, we're going to come in at this angle. Get past all this with our sensors. We're going to watch over here, get past. So what we're going to have here, we're still going to be fighting clearance problems like this thing for the intercooler, right? So we just have to keep maneuvering things around on each side so we can get past this sort of stuff. So I'm going to kind of come on like that maybe. There we go. And then now I'm going to have to have the camera person help me, but we're just going to slide it back down. What you see I did also is I moved the cardboard over a little bit more, again, to help protect the condenser fins as we slide that cam down where the intercooler is going to mount. All right, guys, just to check up here. So we've got it in about 80% of the way. Just go slow and easy. Watch what you're doing. Make sure you only hold the radiator along the top frame or the plastic. Do not touch any of the fins. All right, make sure you reconnect the sensor harness before you position the radiator back in the lower peg because you won't have the clearance to get your hand in there if you don't. All right, when reinstalling these charge air cooler pipes to the intercooler, if you preload the springs like this, it's in position, and you just give it a hit in the back and it locks into place. All right, guys, another tip as you go, if yours came off, there's this little baffle plate that goes on top of the condenser. In between the condenser and the radiator, just kind of get that into position, and snap it back in. Once that's snapped all the way back in, then you can come in and do the upper baffle like this and then put your push pins in. All right, we got all the front reassembled. Let's go over the torque values. The 13 millimeter holding the radiator bracket here and here, those guys are going to go to 80 inch pounds. These two guys that we put the hood latch on are going to go, these are 13 millimeters that go to 16 foot pounds. This uh, front bumper fascia center support bracket, there's two 10 millimeters on this side, 80 inch pounds, and two on this side, 80 inch pounds. This 8 millimeter bolt that holds this, this uh, dryer on the condenser to the radiator and the same 8 millimeter bolt 
that's holding the top of the intercooler and this other eight millimeter bolt holding the condenser of the radiator, all three of those are 89 inch pounds. Okay, then the, we got this, um, this, this lower impact bar, this front bumper lower impact bar, and there's three 13s on each side. Those are all 16 foot pounds. So that completes the torque. The rest are all push pins. All right, guys, the um, bolts that hold the fan shroud on, like this guy here, one here and one at the bottom, those are going to be four foot pounds or 48 inch pounds. And when you do the one over on this side, you can go ahead and reconnect the hose and then put the reservoir tank back on. And the two 10 millimeters that hold that on are also four foot pounds. Now, with all that done, I'm going to take this little kind of protective plastic I put on the upper cooler line. And we're going to take this little yellow shipping plug off from GM. And now we're going to take the cooler line. Remember, the clips are already installed. And what we're going to have to do is going to have to make sure that this is lined up where it sticks in to the fan shroud. And then once we're sure that's in position, I'm going to push it in. You saw these little clips popped out. And then we can push this little guy over the top of them. And that's how we're going to do the bottom one as well. And then, guys, make sure, right where you see my finger pointing, Make sure you get the line back into that retainer that's on the fan shroud after you pop it into the radiator. All right, guys, next up is this piece. I've cleaned it up. You got to be careful reusing these parts. Right on the inside here, there's a rubber seal. And if it's never been taken off, taking it off might give it up the ghost on it, and you'll end up having a leak and have to replace it. Just be aware. You know, you can try to reuse it. I'm going to lubricate this with some clean coolant and then we're going to slide this back on. When we slide it back on, we're going to push this locking clip in and then we'll be ready to reattach the hose. All right, guys, take yourself a rubber mallet, come in through this side, and then you'll be able to tap the little elbow into place. And then once he's tapped into place, push the locking clip on. We pushed the hose on before we did that just to give us some extra hitting space for the rubber uh, mallet, but you don't need to put a lot of force on there. Make sure when you put it on, take note that there is an alignment pin down here, and you want to make sure that pin, uh, maybe if we come down below the bumper here, we can see this guy right there. You want to make sure you get that guy lined up so you don't destroy anything before you give it a whack. Small taps like I showed. All right, the last item we put on before we started topping the coolant off is this air hose here. If there's no specific torque value on these 8 millimeters, just do them snug. You don't want to over-tighten them and crack the plastic. At this point, we, what we've elected to do is get everything assembled except for the front fascia so that we can watch for leaks. And so we're now we're going to start topping off the coolant inside our reservoir. We already have put in about a half a jug and let it drink it up. We're going to keep doing that and, until it stops drinking and watch for gross leaks. All right, guys, we didn't see any gross leaks, so we went ahead and set the fascia on, just held on by two hand-tightened 10-millimeter screws, and we reconnected the fog lights, but most importantly, we reconnected the ambient air sensor so that we don't throw any codes when we start the engine. At this point, we're going to start the engine up, and we're going to continue to keep topping off the fluent, checking for leaks. As soon as we get topped off at this kind of cold temperature, we'll go ahead... If we don't have any leaks, we'll button up the fascia and we'll take it for a test drive so we can get the thermostat to open up. All right, guys, and just a quick shot of the fill procedure in the service manual after everything's all buttoned up. We're going to pick it up right over here. They're going to show you a picture and reference the vent screw. This picture is not exactly correct for the Sonic. I think it's probably a reference picture. I'll show you where it is. It's actually on the driver's side. Um, there they go talking about the, the need to open this up, though, as you refill the coolant to let any air out so you don't get an air pocket. Take note of the 17 inch pounds of torque. It's a plastic screw, this vent screw. Don't over torque it or you'll strip it. If we come over here, past the reservoir, that guy is sitting right there above the upper hose. That's him right there. All right, some final pieces. Um, when you get ready to put this piece of the bumper fascia back in, remember we loosened up the guide, the guide bracket for the fascia. Those two tens go back to 89 inch pounds. Then soap it up, push this guy back in. This T15 that's going in the upward direction here, he's going to get to be 53 inch pounds, and then the other three are 22 inch pounds. When we go do the passenger side, 
we're going to have to put the wheel liner back in, so let's go take a look at that separately. All right, on the passenger side, guys, remember we got to put the liner pieces back in. We're going to put the large one in first and connect these three tongues. Make sure they all latch together. And then you can use the push pins to secure it. Then you can put the extension lower liner in and or use the remaining push pins to secure that. Remember that the one that's farthest over here in the shadows is a push pin shared by both. Then again, the same torque on the T15s. This upper one here is 53 inch pounds and the other three that are forward facing are 22 inch pounds. All right guys, and then underneath each corner, the T15 here and the T15 here, also 22 inch pounds. All right guys, underneath these brackets, the two T15s, remember we had to remove it on the passenger side, although this is the driver's side, they're 27 inch pounds. And this little Phillips here is 53 inch pounds. Make sure the plastic is on the top part facing the, the ground with the bracket behind it because the threads for the fastener and the metal bracket. Again, you've got the uh, 53 inch pounds on the Phillips on the uh, passenger side as well as this driver's side view. All right, guys, and then on the lower fascia cover, these 13s at each end, they're going to be 16 foot pounds. And these little T15s at each end and in the middle are going to be 22 inch pounds. Don't forget your push pin right there in the center as well. All right, last set of torque values. So this upper cover for the top of the fascia opening, there's no torque value on these Phillips. And these ones that have no torque value, I just recommend two finger torque to get it good and tight, just two fingers on the tool. Your, your push pins and then these four 10 millimeters, these two here and these two here are 36 inch pounds. All right, guys, we took our test drive. Everything's good. We're going to keep monitoring our coolant level, but we got one more thing to do before we close out this video. We spilt inadvertently. You can't avoid it. You're going to lose some transmission uh, fluid when you take off those cooling lines. So we need to replace that. So we're going to come down here on top of the transmission. This is a, if, on an automatic transmission, of course. And we're going to take some compressed air before we do this. And we blew any debris off. We're going to remove this little black cap. And then we're going to stick a long funnel in that hole. You'll need a long one because you've got the computer, the engine computer sitting here. So you want to have something long enough where you can get in that hole. And then you want to put in just what you collected in your drain pan that drained out when you pulled the two cooling lines. That'll get it close enough uh, to where it is. You don't want to overfill these kind of transmissions. They don't like being overfilled. It should just be an ounce or two, um, or it may even be less. It depends on your situation. Every vehicle may be a little bit different with the residual amount that's in the line. We're going to top that off with some AC Delco Dexron 6. We've already topped off our coolant with AC Delco Dex Cool, and so we are good to go. This repair is done. It's a lot of work just to change the radiator on this particular model vehicle. It's not necessarily tied to the engine because the same engine is used in other GM vehicles, but this particular small subcompact car, it's really a lot packed in here that you got to unpack to get at it. If you got questions or comments, leave them below and I'll try to help. If this helped you get the job done, saved you some money, or just taught you something, pay it forward, hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. And as always, thanks for watching.